Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Into our first day of bigger lockdown. But essential services are still allowed, so I guess I'm still essential. <laughs> anyway, we're on page Nun Vav. And now we're going to get to that challenging question about the conflict between saying that it's complete bittal versus making any effort at all. So that's, the page keeps moving. Okay, here we are. We're in subsection Dalit now. Still chapter Aleph, subsection Dalit, number four. Habitol eina stira lemaase. Bitol is not a contradiction to action, lamasim, to actions. And that was the question that was asked a few days ago. So he says, believe this idea of bitol in your heart, chayev lios yachad imavoda bapol, must be simultaneously with active work, which that itself seems contradictory. If, if I'm nothing, I'm absolutely nothing before Hashem, I'm not going to do anything. And, <laughs> and here's the klipa. Fitzorachli, he saw here, and you have to be careful. Shalolipo le klipa. You shouldn't fall into the shell of Omeris. Memela ha kolza rak Hashem is brach. At the end of the day, it's all Hashem. Az ma yesh lili fall. So what have I got to do? That's the klip. The klip is saying, what does it matter if I try? Hashem's going to get what he wants anyway. So this is a very difficult philosophical issue we're going to try to navigate. I don't think we're going to finish it all today. That's not true. You have to take both sides of the coin together at the same time. On the one hand, a person has to live with complete nullification before Hashem. To remember that this is all Hashem. And he is the doer of all true action. On the other hand, you need to know. Hashem is given into our hands a shlichus, a, a mission. To act and to do. And our obligation is to make the effort. There's two sides. To nullify. And also to act. On the one hand, if a person makes his primary focus, what's his? What's his? He says, may do. So who got machtias matar? He's also missing the target. The Nepal Bilbul guy will fall into confusion and arrogance. La atzvus to deshen vidaga and worry vakas and anger, because he's saying, how come what I want to do isn't happening? Or wow, I did a great job. I'm not being sad as sheni, but on the other hand, Adam lo yasa kum prisas do anything. El Iraqi's battle, the Yomer, if he nullifies only and says, I call Zerak Hashem, Hashem's doing everything, and I won't do anything, I'm saying a tachlis. That's also not a goal. Kilol is over. Hashem did not create the world just to be wasted. Hashem is for Tzivon, or Lifo Ba'olam. Hashem commanded us to act in the world. So, so what, how are we going to hold these two together? It's still not any better. So, El Adercha Yesharhi, what's the straight way of doing things? Lahaschul called over before you start, and in the very beginning, you start off im hargashas bitol. You say, Hashem is totally everything, and me and myself, I'm not able to accomplish anything. Mitoch hakara shakol ze Hashem isparach. That it's all Hashem, va'edam va'adam be'etzam ein klum, and a person essentially is nothing. Okay, there's a huge footnote on this, but I still want to read a little bit more so we just get a little bit of closure on this topic while the, the footnote is enormous. After you feel the bittle and you realize, I ain't doing anything. It's all Hashem. Then go do the most you can. With all your efforts. Why? In order to bring honor to Hashem. 
Toch Kidei Shu Zocher Kosman, but he's always remembering Shalohu Olaseh. He's not the one who's doing it. Elohu Rakshliach, he's just an agent. Now, how are you supposed to feel at the end of all that? Rukesh Desayim Lasa, so when he's done and he's finished either successfully or not, but let's say even successfully, Yachser Lahargashas, he should return to a feeling of Beetle Gamora, complete Beetle again. It's a sandwich. The beetle sandwich, the new sandwich we're making. It's a beetle sandwich with a little bit of effort. You got the two slices of bread. That's the beetle. Inside is my effort. The aspect Hashem finishes it for me. The Yisker should remember, that even though he's doing things externally, that Hashem is doing the real thing. And what's the sign? If you really got this, it doesn't matter to him how successful he concluded it. When a person lives with the truth, when Hashem is a real doer, if I have done what I'm capable of doing, I have finished my mission. I've done what I can do. The ila tatzaba fall, but the result, the actual result, sheches rakei lavish is brach. That only depends on Hashem. Bukvar yashli maseinin al tzadachitov, and Hashem will finish it off the way it's the best way possible. Vraku yedei matov bemes, and only Hashem knows what is truly the best. That was all above the footnotes. So now we got to dig deep inside to go through these enormous footnotes over here to see what's going on over here. But this is what we mentioned. I would reference you to uh, last night's partial light class. Um, not telling you have to learn it all, but especially the last um, 15, 20 minutes where the, where the Parsha starts, where Hashem, Vaidaber um, Hashem al Moshe. Hashem speaks to Moshe. Vaidaber means Vaidaber Elohim al Moshe. Vaidaber is an expression of harshness. Elohim is an expression of judgment. And the Medrash says, Hashem was judging Moshe. What was you? Moshe was complaining. Since you sent me, everything turned bad. Why'd you send me? Why'd you send me? So first, the answer, Vayom Elohim, the attribute of justice, speaking hard, El Moshe. Then Vayomer Elov. Then it says, and he spoke to him, Vayomer, in a nice, Vayomer is a soft, a love to him, Ani Hashem, I am Hashem, which is the attribute of mercy. And what the commentaries explain is that Moshe was, was learning this very lesson. In other words, Hashem sends Moshe to get the Jewish people out. So what's Moshe thinking? Okay, he sent me out, and if I'm going to try my best, and I should succeed because Hashem's telling me to do it. It's not that I did it on my own. I didn't even want to do it, says Moshe. You told me to do it. Go and Paro let them go. So I go and Paro doesn't. So Moshe is upset. Why? Is he? He's really upset because the Jewish people are suffering more. That's... But Hashem says, you're making a mistake. Because Moshe is figuring, if you sent me, it should have succeeded. So Hashem says, no, no, no. You only have one job. Your job is to be the messenger. When I send you to do it, all I ask you to do is the most you can do. That's all I'm asking you to do. Who told you when you do the most you can do, you have to succeed? Who said? So it says, so, so then what? So that's, that's what Rashi says, uh, and that Ani Hashem, and Rashi says, An Ani Hashem, that's an often used term, I am the one who gives the reward. And Rashi's saying, I don't give you the reward for the success. I give you the reward for one thing, being a shliach of Hashem, that's it. Because it's ridiculous to think that you can be the cause of the success. And Moshe, all I ever ask for you or anybody is to realize that I am giving you the mission and I am giving you the strength to do the mission. And you are trying to glorify my name to reveal the godliness in this world that cannot happen unless a human being does it. And I'll decide how much needs to be revealed at this time. Now, if you think it's all about you, then you're very upset that it didn't work. 
So Moshe is saying, I don't understand. It's supposed to work. You told me if I knew it wasn't going to work, I wasn't going to do it. That's a lot of times we don't start things unless we think we'll succeed. So I said, I'm saying, who said you had to succeed? Where did I tell you that you're going to succeed? So what are you upset? They're, they're hurting more? I understand. But, I'm, but Hashem was already critical of that. How could you even judge that I didn't know what I was doing? Okay, it was from the pain from the Jews. So we understand it wasn't his own. But there must have been a little bit of ego in Moshe at this point and saying, well, I tried my best. Why didn't it work? Hashem's the Hashem. I'm still, at the end of the day, the one who runs it all. Moshe, feel very good about yourself. Don't have any bad self-esteem. You did everything I asked you to do, and I didn't plan on it working. Why? There's other commentaries to get into it, other Parsha classes. I don't have time for that. But that is the primary point. So now let's take a look at the footnotes. So what basically has been said is we have the beetle sandwich. You start off, this is all Hashem and nothing of me. However, what Hashem requires, remember, Hashem created the world for Torah and for the Jewish people. Hashem created the world. There should be people who do the will of Hashem and where God's blessing manifests through them. And when people see God's blessing manifest through humanity, that humanity acts in a divine way and Hashem produces divinely a gr- a successful results, that's what the world's all about. Hashem cannot do that by himself. Hashem can, Hashem can do everything. Hashem can bring plagues. Hashem can do everything. But Hashem can't have the Jewish people coronate Hashem over them. That is your choice. Because at the end of the day, that's what the world's about. So therefore, the fact that you know that Hashem is doing everything, that doesn't matter. So Hashem is doing everything. But who's the person that's willing to have the results be manifest through them? And that's the Bittel sandwich. The Bittel sandwich is start off knowing it's only Hashem. Now it's only Hashem. And now you're working your hardest what? So that Hashem should radiate from your actions and shine on the rest of the world through you with Hashem's force. That partnership. Because if you don't get up and do anything, yeah, Hashem can bring floods. Hashem can bring all kinds of things. But he can't make divine people act in a divine fashion. Because if he does, then they're not really divine. And then you give all your effort and good results or not good results, that's not your business. Of course, you'd like good results for Hashem's sake, but if it's not good, you know Hashem understands what he's doing too, and then let it go. And therefore, you're totally obliged to what? To let the divine flow that only Hashem can make flow through your actions. And the rest of the world will see that. And then you are just the loyal messenger. Okay, that's about as good as I can explain it without going into more footnotes. All right, but that's the main idea. So it's the Bittel sandwich idea. So pay Aleph, starting off in the beginning, complete Bittel. The beginning of your service, there must be complete Bittel to Hashem. There's no other reality except Hashem, our Lord. Hashem is one. Once a person nullifies himself totally before Hashem, then Hashem wants the person to do the work. But remembering the whole time that you're not doing anything. Okay? Now, pay base. That's the long one now. So muhrachim la hasl be beetle. You gotta start with the beetle. The actual hasl you can't start with actions. He said, What's wrong if I start with actions? And then I'll put the bitl in later. <laughs> no, the actions are gonna take too much of a place. Kim Yaskal the Asiya Shala Nivra. If we start with the actions of the created being, well alihi sachefach are you're very likely to f- uh, fall into the trap and in, attribute in to yourself. Because look what I'm doing. So we got to right away disabuse yourself of that thought. Okay, now say to who the order has to be beetle nullification. Then work. And when you finish again, beetle. I know that Shem did it all. For example, let's save me. I have to give a class. I have to give a shiur. It ain't going to happen if I stay in bed. Right? It's it's not going to happen unless I do it. Look what I'm doing now to make a shear. On top of all the 
preparation and learning, I have to be a technical expert now, right? So I got to give a shit. I got to sit down first before I do anything. We'll be conscious of beetle. I have to enter in the world of beetle. Well, on Argish, I'm supposed to feel only be atzvimal. I have nothing to say of teaching Torah. Vegam lo yechol aslomer, and I'm not even able to say ki hakol rak. Vegam lo yechol mar. I can't say anything ki hakol rak Hashem is perach also because Hashem is the one who's doing everything. Vani only shum koich koich. I have no independent power. Vishum etzis asvis. Again, I have no independent reality. I am totally nothing. Okay, I can do, I can accomplish nothing. Then I got to say, okay, although I can't do anything, I'm going to go through the motions. Because the, at the end of the day, Hashem wants me to give a shear. I hope. Hashem, the will of Hashem is I should teach Torah. So he wants me to give a shear. So, okay, so I'm going to try to give the best share I can. But once I started with the beetle, and I'm v'nichna sechele kasiya mitoch hargashas of beetle, and I start to enter the actions with a feeling of beetle still there, then I will do it in the right way. And what's that? In other words, if it's all Hashem, then there's nothing going to be self-serving over here. So what's the proper way of doing things? Rashi is number one. You spalla Hashem is for believe Hashem is darling Hashem with a true heart. The avakish you ask like we start the Amida. Hashem is for sighty talk. Hashem, you open up my lips. Ki akol zerakato. Just like you start Shmon Esrei, I should really before I give a shear, I should say under my breath, Hashem is for sighty talk. Ufi agite wasecha, because it's all you. Let me be meritorious to be a conduit of your light. Then then do your thing. And speak what Hashem gives you to say. And even when you are in the middle of speaking, you got both halves of the coin at the same time. On the one hand, don't be arrogant with your braininess. Just speak from a recognition that I'm just the conduit for Hashem's light. Remember that Hashem gives them. So let's say somebody asks a question that's not so um, on target. So the difference is now, if you're beetled or not, it's going to depend what the action is. So if, if you don't, if you think it's all you, you think this, why couldn't this guy get it? Like, what's wrong with him? I gave a great presentation. He's totally missed the mark. So then you kind of answer with smugness or, you know, disappointment or whatever. But if you say, my job was to give this year. And the hope is the guy would get it. He didn't get it. Okay. That could be the will of Hashem. I don't know. So how badly do I want him to know it? Really bad. Okay. So maybe I'll just patiently say, Okay, maybe I didn't explain it properly. Let me try another way to explain it to you. It's not easy if you think you did it because I did a great job. What are you talking about? But if you're a messenger of Hashem, what does Hashem want? Does Hashem want me to give the shear, or does he want the people to know Torah? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it I could show off how smart I am and just go, Woo, wow, that was amazing shear. I didn't understand the word, but I knew it must have been amazing. Or the idea is I want everyone to walk out with the message of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And if it's not coming, then maybe Hashem wants to give it another way. Umitzad Shani, on the other hand, but I just can't say, well, I'm doing what Hashem wants. I'm just going to blurt whatever comes out of my mouth because it's all Hashem anyway. No, 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 no. You got to weigh your words. You're saying the right words. You're thinking before you speak. I'm responsible. You're saying something, but maybe it's going to be taken the wrong way. You got to be sure you're clear. You're not going to mislead people. What am I going to care? Hashem's going to decide anyway. No, 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 no. Hashem wants you to do the best that you can do. And if you're not prepared, let's say, oh, I'm, give a I'm not going to prepare. I'm just going to go off the cuff. That's usually not a good class. Oh, Hashem's going, no, no, no. Hashem wants you to try. Now, we don't need to be paranoid. Oh, I got to prepare 27 hours to give a 10-minute class. That would be ridiculous. Again, you make a reasonable effort as opposed to no effort. 
That's when you're giving the class. If you're giving the class, as the words are coming out, you're hoping Hashem is having the right words come out and the right intention is happening. But I'm giving it all I can. But when the shear is over, go back to the other part of the sandwich. Nullify. At the end of the day, I didn't do anything. Because that's the truth. The truth is you didn't do anything. Then you are saved from confusion. What kind of confusion? What happens when you finish giving the class? What happens often to a presenter? I'll let you guys give a Zoom presentation for a meeting. It's no different. You start second guessing yourself. Maybe if I would have done it this way, maybe it would have been better. Now that I think about it, this and that. No, 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 no. You tried your best? Yes. Now, therefore, you're not going to say, I, I could have said it better. Or similar. Because he knows at the end of the day, because at the end of the day, Hashem does it all. So whatever came out, that's the best. And certainly knows there's something to brag about. So therefore, when you're finished, oh, I forgot to say this point. I'm gonna, I should let it go. Hashem didn't want me to remember. I, 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 I got mixed up, whatever. That's the way Hashem wanted it. You, 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 now, again, if you don't prepare, you don't do anything, then you could say, listen, you didn't, I didn't prepare. No, no, no. You got to be sincere and give it your best shot. So you give it your best shot. You say it, feel it, Hashem, Hashem, help me be successful. And then let's say it bombed. And you know what? You said, Hashem, I guess you wanted it to bomb. Okay, maybe I could learn from that. And in the future, imagine, you know, a, a flaming coal guy wants to do Kiruv with secular people. So what does he do? He says, you're going to burn in hell. You're going to this, you're going to that. And he really thinks that's the best way. I mean, from what he knows, it's the best way. They all leave. Well, I guess that was the will of Hashem. Well, it depends. Maybe you could have done a little more homework. But maybe that is the will of Hashem. You know? Often, I find that, you know, you could do your best and you still don't change anybody. And sometimes I just feel that's the way it's destined to be. And to stop beating yourself up that I could have been more successful in life. You know, no, it's not. As long as you did what was reasonable and you tried your best, that was all you had to do. The fact, oh, how come I couldn't have changed more people's lives? You know, what? that's exactly how many people God wanted to have changed. And that's it. And then you have to let it go. Okay, now, look what in the brackets he adds, though. But the truth is, in if you really made a bad mistake, he did or says something that's not according to halacha. He has to figure out, if I'm giving a class in halacha, and I say this is mutza, but I didn't really research it enough, and it's not mutza, I guess, well, I guess that was a little shame that I should say the wrong halacha. No, no, you, you always got to follow the Shulchan Aruch at the end of the day. No, I really made a big mistake. Now, are you man enough to just send an email to her? I'm sorry, I made a totally big mistake. Because again, it's for Hashem. So again, you made the mistake, fine. Don't beat yourself over the mistake. But now correct it as soon as possible. Don't say, well, Hashem, maybe you made a mistake. It must have been a good thing. No, if it's halacha, remember, this rule always is, never violate halacha based on this. Ki who? <clears throat> Because the rule is, in general, we have to live with the truth. Hashem is doing everything. That's only for the past. Whatever has to do with the future, you got to always be engaged in the future. Yeah, in the past, I can't be, oh, how could I have been so dumb to have made that mistake? It's the past, let it go. But, oh, but there's damage? That will affect the future. Now you have the ability to, to make sure the damage doesn't happen in the future. That, that's a part of what's the created world. To be a trusted messenger of Hashem. To do everything as his will. And in our aspect, you have to correct mistakes. You shouldn't get confused. Confounded. 
Because at the end of the day, certainly you are responsible for what you do. You are responsible. You have to make efforts with all you, you have to make efforts with all you got. That you should do things in the proper way. And if you weren't careful to do it properly, the kilkel, and you caused something to be damaged, as a yin, shall be punished. If you don't do tshuva, veins a saucer claw, and that's not contradicting at all. As a ms apnim is the real truth. Shakol rak in Hashem, everything's in Hashem's hand. In other words, yeah, it was in Hashem's hand that you'd muff it. Now Hashem wants you to do tshuva. <laughs> How could I have made that mistake? I, I knew it every time. How did I give a boneheaded answer that? I should have made you give a boneheaded answer. Why would he do that? Because he wants to show that you're a big enough man to admit your mistake now. To say, you know what? I don't know how, but I'm totally wrong. And I totally take back what I said. It should not have happened. Right? So that's still the future. What's past is past. You can't beat yourself up. But where do we deal from now forward because of what you did? The Om Kim Gedolim Vinaram. There's great depths to this. Shein Kamu. It's not the place for us to get into this. What does it pertain for real bottom line? Shetzarach Lahamin Sheshtei Atzam. You have to move that both sides. Gama Yichud, the divine oneness of everything. The Gama Bechira and free will choice. Heim Emes Gemur. They're totally true. Zemi Gama Shetzarach. That's only something Hashem could do. Shachalasos Shanirim Kishev. It's like he's doing two opposites. And you have to say the truth. They work together. Because that's the famous question the Rambam asks. How could you say this free will choice if Hashem runs everything? And the answer is, there's no way human beings can figure this out. You go figure that out as much as you can figure out the maka of borod, hail. How do you have hail, fire and water together? When you can explain that, then you can explain how God controls everything. And yet you have free will choice. Because he gives you the free will choice and he knows what's going to happen at the end. The free will choice is and never changes. You want it to be a loyal servant to Hashem? That is 100% yours. Make mistakes? Oh, Hashem may have interfered. Yeah, he may have made you make a mistake. But the thing that he'll never interfere is you're choosing to be a loyal servant of Hashem. That he never messes up. He'll give you challenges. He'll make it hard. You'll make mistakes, but what is it that you want? So the overall rule that we have to live with is that things that don't depend on us, there you have to believe in just God runs it all. That Hashem makes it all come out. What does not depend on me? The results. The results does not depend on me. We could go and dover. Sha'asisi, and let's say something I did. The Ainu Dover Shitzarh Lasak, no, and nothing needs to get fixed. But that Nigma Achelik shall be really my free will choice is done. Venisha Rakayhu, just God running the show is left. I did exactly what I I did exactly what I did. Vanit Sarkla Das, I need to know Shem is Rah Manika call the Tova Governor. Shem leading everything to a complete good. The Ain Li and I don't have. Looking for a stopping place here. Mali's ghost because I have nothing to be arrogant about. I shouldn't feel pain that I could have made things even better. Or things that other people do. And I have nothing, I have no control. No control what the government decides in terms of the lockdown. And it's certainly honestly a different. I have to know completely. Hashem brought this lockdown. Exactly with every rule that the Ford government brought, Hashem brought every aspect of that. That is not in my control. What's in my control is how am I going to respond to that lockdown? How am I going to do the will of Hashem in that lockdown? And it's not my will. And only that part, but the, the results still not going to be. Okay. Okay. But af. Just in the brackets, even though my friend has free will choice in his actions, and he's responsible for his actions. So that's true from his perspective, because that's part of his shlichus. But from my perspective, I see him only from what Hashem is doing, because Hashem controls the world. You see what's going on? 
The other guy, he has his free will choice, but Hashem's going to decide how much of that affects me. So if I'm not going to take revenge on that guy, I understand that's what Hashem is doing. That's in the things that God is in control of. We still have to see the other part. What about the things that you are in control of? We've got to stop it right there so we can get in for Mincha. Okay, shkoyach everybody.